With this video, I've decided to take a doll and this weird looking chopping board and turn them into something else. The Resident Evil 4 is coming out today! Oh wait, it's already out by the time this video comes out. Yeah, I'm late with this video. I was trying to get it done before Resident Evil 4 Remake came out, but I didn't get it done in time. Sad. So what am I doing with the thrift store makeover today? I'm going to be taking this weird looking brick thing that I found at the thrift store and this doll. It's not really this doll, it's a different doll that I found at the thrift store. I found this on eBay. <laughs> But you get the point. I'm gonna be taking this and I'm gonna be doing something with Rather Than Evil. Let's get on with this. I'm already sad now. So here at the board that I'll be turning into the base for my creature. Well, the regenerator in this case. But in this case, we're not gonna be focusing on the board right now. Instead, I want to focus more on this doll here. I got this character starter kit from the same thrift store as well. I love this packaging as well. The packaging looked like it's something from the 80s. Hoping I didn't destroy something from the 80s. Whatever. You can make this doll into whatever you want, but in order for me to have this doll to be the person that I've always wanted to be, I need to get this doll out of the packaging. And it wasn't hard to get this doll out of the packaging. No, I didn't rip the box just to get the doll out. Just ignore all that ripping part. And here's the doll, wearing an ugly shirt. It came with a wig for longer hair, I guess? And with a pretty good posability. I do love the shorts that they came with, and I really love the hairstyle that they also have. But you guys know where this is going. I went ahead and clipped the hair off. With the hair that they had. Part of me had like cried by this too for this cool looking hairstyle. <laughs> Just to make sure to cut the hair down close to the head as possible. It was a bit of a struggle because, well, one, the head is a bit smaller than normal. And two, my scissors are a bit bigger than I wanted. So, after finally getting rid of the beautiful hair... <laughs> I cleaned all my decks of the hair that was left behind from, you know, cutting it off. It still continued to cut their hair off. <laughs> Jesus, move on. I did the best I can. You don't need to remind me of chopping off that beautiful hair. Where were we? Finally, after cutting the hair off with what felt like an eternity, don't have a pretty good clean cut. Well, mostly, that is. But I'm not done yet. Time to get the mutilating I mean plastic surgery. In order to turn our friend and tear into the regenerator from Resident Evil, I need to get rid of a few things, like the nose and ears on the head. I did try to cut their arm off with an exacto blade. I don't know why I tr even tried that. That wouldn't go well for me and the doll. So I needed something to cut the arm and legs off. Before getting to the cutting, I needed to mark the spot down on the doll where I wanted to cut with the Dremel tool. I even marked the area like the neck and the face, even the legs as well. I need them to be longer and to open the mouth anyways. Before grabbing up my Dremel tool, I decided to clean the face off by using acetone, which is pointless by the way. Then I decided to dump the head into hot water to move the head from the body. I'm surprised that the marks that I made on the doll still remain on the doll. Hmm, very interesting. But I did dry off the doll from hot water and the marks still remain. I took the time to remove the hair plugs that still remain on the doll's head. Sadly, you can't see me removing it. This was when my camera was not in the position that it is now. I'm starting this project way back in February. Or maybe late January. I don't remember. I don't remember when I started this whole project. Now that the head is clean from the hair plug and has been removed from the body, it's finally time to bring out the Dremel tool and get the work. Need my mask and glasses for this. Not wanting to breathe that stuff in. Also don't want plastic in my eyes as well. Now it's finally time to cut off the arms. The arms are the only thing I cut off. I cut off both the arms and went down to the legs. This doesn't look painful at all. I went ahead and cut off the neck as well on the doll. Then I went ahead and opened up the mouth. Now I'm wondering what I can say and what I can't say before my video gets taken down. I didn't cut the doll jaw off completely because I still wanted the piece to attach to the head. But out of the cutting it open, I almost completely took in the lower part of the doll's mouth off. I almost did, but thankfully I stopped before any of the chopping could cap it. So after cutting the doll up and cleaning the doll off camera, I have all the pieces here in a Ziploc bag. This isn't weird at all. After dumping all the do doll's body part, I'm hoping this doesn't end me on any watch list or anything. After dumping out all of the doll's body part... <laughs> uh, okay. 
Okay. <laughs> Let's just move on. I grab out my wires and wire cutter to get the wires ready to put this guy back together. This took me a while to figure out how I was going to do it. Even using the glue that I no longer use anymore, at all, whatsoever, don't like that glue anymore. Speaking of glue, this is the one reason why I hate this glue. Better. Forever's are dry, but it breaks easily. You're unlike my love of my life. Even though it does take a little bit to dry. I still love it. I still love you. Anyways, I probably should have done something different with the how I attached the arm back to the body, but I didn't, so now I will have to struggle with the arm for eternity. Also, the glue was the reason why this took forever to do. Because of how long it took to dry, I was sitting there at my desk, staring down at the doll, while also not wanting to stare in the face of danger. Trying to glue all the pieces together, I even glued in the legs with the wire as well. This won't be a problem in the future. At least I attempted to glue the wires and feet back together, as I was gluing it in the other leg into the left side of the body. Uh, some of the glue got into the joint of the doll, and I didn't want to glue in the joint right away, so I rushed the doll to the sink to clean it all. But, however, when I was cleaning it, the other leg fell off, so that didn't work. Also, one of the arm fell off as well. Jeez, new gluing them in wouldn't work at all. So that was fun. Instead of having the arms or legs to keep breaking off the body, I decided that the best course of action was to wrap the smaller wire around the bigger wire, including the legs and arms. Wow, this is a good idea. Hopefully I don't do something stupid and like removing the wire in the future. Before I decided to make another mistake on the list of problems that I have, I went ahead and attached the neck back to it. I think the doll really want the neck back, don't they? Not too special. I'm pulling out my air dry clay and got to work. I started putting the clay onto the doll and wait. Oh look, there's me actually doing another mistake. That's me taking off the wire that keeps support the other wire to keep the legs and arm not falling off. One of this will have dire consequences for me in the future. After the mistake of mine, I added clay to the area that needed clay. Oh look, I broke one of the arm off. Gee, I hope this isn't a foreshadowing for anything in the future. Finally, after all of that with this clay, it was time for me to move on to the head of the doll. So I wanted an open mouth of this doll, kind of like how Gen Regenerator have that open gaping mouth in the game. You know, this. Yeah, that. That's what I wanted. But when I was trying to open the mouse and to keep it open, I didn't want to close the neck pole yet. Well, at all, because I wanted to attach the head back to the body. So I actually used wire to keep the mouth open after I punched the pole through the jawline. And I glued in the wire in the area that I wanted them to be in. You know, in the jaw. Jeez, I'm surprised the doll didn't break off the head at the time of this process. Thankfully, it never did. Which would have made this whole process even more difficult. I always wonder what happened to those pliers I had. They disappeared on me one day, and I still haven't been able to find them. Please, if you guys see these pliers, please call me. I'm missing them. They need to come home. Where are they? I haven't seen them in... Anyways, I did sculpt on the head that was off the body. But, um, as I was sculpting, I decided that was the best at course of action to put the head back onto the body. Because, you know, I break things, and I don't want to break more. So here it is, the body and the head. And I should have had the hairdryer with me because when I attempted to put the head back onto the body, not only did the neck peg broke for some reason, I don't really know how it broke, it just broke on me, but also part of the neck itself broke as well. I think at one point I did have a plan to keep this doll poseable, but because of the broken neck and the neck peg, I decided that it would be best for the doll to be like a bigger doll instead of a poseable doll. So, because, uh, so I've already added clay to the neck, so figuring it is! I went ahead and glued the head on top of the doll's body, and it will remain there forever to someone break it off, of course. Hopefully never. But enough of that. Let's get back to sculpting this guy. Sculpting? Sculpting? Sculpting! Okay, back to the, uh, sculpting. This didn't take me long as I thought it was going to take me. Well, besides the right arm breaking off on some occasion. And having to glue the creature's uh, nose back onto his face, I didn't find it difficult to sculpt on this guy. Now, however, I did find as I was putting on the first layer of clay, the more I build up the body, the weight... Okay, um, it wasn't as easy as I thought. There were some difficulty I did. But I'm making it sound like it was easy, but it's not. It wasn't easy. Completely easy. There were some difficulty I had to go through when I was sculpting this guy. Uh, when I was putting the first layer of clay on him, I to build up his body the way I wanted it, 
the more I, I put clay on, the more difficult to keep the clay from hitting the joints. So I ended up gluing the joints in later and just putting the clay over them. That made it a lot easier for me. I tried the best of my ability to sculpt the body first, but moving to the arms like that and the legs, like I mentioned before, that was starting to become harder and harder as the sculpting went. So after the first layer of clay went down onto the top of the doll, the second set of clay went on him and I still ha had to build up the body. Probably should have used tinfoil foods. That probably would have made it, the sculpting like 10 times more easier for me, but whatever. Once I was able to get the body type that I wanted, I started sculpting in the detail that I needed for the monster. I started putting in the clay for the muscles and, and body fit and the regenerator because we all know they have a chunky belly. I'm going off of the original design of the original game. The sculptor was done before the release of the remake, and before we got in the uh, new design of the regenerator in the remake. But I can say this is kind of a good timing because while well, Death Island came out this month and this uh, video is coming out this month, the movie doesn't have regenerator in it. But it does have these freaking cool looking liquors in it. Only for a brief moment though. Okay, I'll admit that my sculpting skills aren't that great as you probably have seen me sculpture it in, on my channel before, many 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 times before. I really tried with this guy, but the more I added onto the guy, the more he started to look like a fat molded zombie from Resident Evil 7 rather than the regenerator from Resident Evil 4. You can definitely tell that I'm not the greatest sculptor, and especially with those feet. Like, what are those? Are they supposed to be feet or some sort of tumor? They don't even look like feet. I was frustrated with my sculpting skills and that one of the arms that looked like it had been ripped to shred rather than an arm because I was getting frustrated enough that I decided to not make an arm and just, you know, make an arm that looked to figure and all that stuff. I did do the other uh, arm and hand off camera. Next up is the face. What? You thought we weren't going to be seeing the, the face up in this video? Don't worry, this is just the first part. I added clay to the mouth and added in teeth that I pre-made off camera with using a pocket sculpt. I did use some of pocket sculpt for this project, and I think I have enough teeth for that alligator thing I'm working on. I shoved in each of the teeth in the mouth, probably should have pulled them out to make the painting easier on the inside, but whatever. Once all of the sculpting is done, I pulled out my epoxy sculpt to fix up the right arm, probably should have done that with the left arm as well, and I used what I had left of the face. Since the clay had pretty much covered up the face, I needed to make a new face for them. Not only did I gave them some brand new eyes, but I also gave them some facial wrinkles as well. Now, finally, after all of that time sculpting this guy out, it's finally! Finally time to get to the painting, starting with the base coat for, well, the base coat. So I'm afraid that I'll have to put this guy into a part video. I really hate doing this, but when I was organizing all of the video files for this, um, well, this specific, uh, thrift store makeover, it was way too long, so, yeah. So yeah, um, I'm leaving it here for the end of part one. If you want to check out part two when it comes out next week, consider subscribing to my channel, and I'll catch you guys next week. Bye, dragons!